hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Brahma Talks, a monthly webinar series organized by the Grodzka Gate and then TFS Center from Lublin, Poland. My name is Agata Radkowska Parka. Uh, I am a team member of the Grodzka Gate or Brahma Grodzka, as we call it. Uh, and I have the great pleasure to welcome you all to the Brahma Talks meeting. Uh, I'm pretty sure you are familiar with our program, uh, as it's already the 10th webinar within that series, and to Brahma Grodzka itself. Uh, but for those of you who are with us for the first time, Brahma Grodzka Teatr uh, is a municipal cultural center that is committed to the remembrance of uh, the Jewish community of Lublin. Today, our meeting will last for around one hour. Uh, we have two guests and two presentations. Uh, at the end of the meeting, for around 15 minutes, we are going to have a Q&A session. Uh, please feel free to use the Q&A mode in the Click Meeting room, or if you are viewing us on uh, YouTube, then YouTube uh, live chat to ask questions during the whole meeting. Uh, and please use chat to make comments, to say hi, or to simply let us know from where you are viewing us from. Um, and uh, finally, it's the time to introduce our uh, honorable guests. Uh, today, we have a pleasure to host a uh, Lubliner from Israel, uh, a dear friend of Brahma Grodzka, uh, Neta Zhytomirska Avidar, who will share the story of her cousin, uh, Henio Zhytomirski. Uh, hi, Neta. Um, a story of Henio, uh, a boy uh, from Lublin who perished in the Shoah. Uh, a moving story of uh, Henio, which you are going to hear in a moment, was an inspiration for uh, Brahma Grodzka team to create a whole uh, educational project based on it. And about this activity, you will hear from uh, Dominika Mayuk, uh, who will follow Neta's presentation. Uh, no. So Neta, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Uh, it's a great pleasure. Uh, hi, Dominika, uh, nice to see you. Um, thank you both for accepting our invitation. Uh, it, it's a great, great pleasure to see you and have you today with us. Um, I know there is also uh, Jacob Avidar somewhere behind the screen with Neta. So uh, welcome, Jacob. Thank you uh, for your technical support. Um, and it's nice to see you. Uh, so uh, without further ado, Neta, you are welcome to start the presentation. Good evening. This is a story in letters from three different starting points. Three stories set off. The intersection of their roads created a new story. The first story is about a Jewish boy who was born in Lublin and was killed in Majdanek before age of 10. The short life of my cousin, Henio Zitomirski, tells the story of life and destruction of a family and a community. The second story is my story. I came from Israel to Poland, searching the past of my family. There were things I knew. There were things I had not known and found out, and things that also my late father did not know. In archives in Israel, I discovered letters that my father had no knowledge of their existence. The third story is the story of Brahma Grotzka, Theater and Name, members of an avant-garde Polish theater who encountered the muted past of the Jewish community in Lublin and decided to raise its memory and make its voice heard. In the unification between me, Henio, and Brahma Grotzka, a new story was created, Letters to Henio, an original way to tell the Holocaust story. The first story. This picture was taken in Zitomirski apartment in Lublin, Poland, after the wedding of my aunt, Sonia. This is a ceremonial picture, 
a directed picture. At the center, a young woman, the bride, my aunt Sonia, the eldest daughter of the family. Don't look for a white dress. It wasn't necessary at those days. The, the bride was wearing her nice good dress and that's it. In front of her, her parents, my grandparents, Ephraim and Chaya. Left to Chaya, her sisters and brother with their families. They came especially from Varsha, Warsaw, to attend the wedding. Above my grandparents, their daughters, three daughters, Sonia, Rachela, Esther, Estusha. Below my grandparents, their sons, Shmuel, father of Henio, and my father, Yehuda. Yehuda was called at home Leibush, and in Polish he was called Leon. Look at my father with open collar, Chalutz, member of the Shomer Atzair movement, intending to immigrate to Palestine, to Eretz Israel. At the top of the picture, with a papillon tie, the groom, Yosef Korenberg. And if you look well, Behind, on the wall, are two pictures of my great-grandmother and great-grandfather, Liba and Avraham Dov Melamed. And where is Henio? Why we don't see him in the family picture? At that time, Henio was a child, a little kid of three years, and was not invited to the ceremony of the adults. Here he is. At age of three, uh, here he is celebrating his birthday. Little king in kingdom of children with golden paper crown on his head and royal robe on his shoulders. He is a king for one day. I look at the picture and somehow I suddenly think of King Mat the First, Amelech Matya Rishon, Krul Matius Pierpse, in the book of Janusz Korczak. My uncle Shmuel. Shmuel was the eldest son in Jitomirsky family. He was a teacher and an intellectual. He dedicated his life to Zionist social cultural activities. He was the chairman of Poalei Zion party in Lublin and conductor, conducted the highest branch in Lublin. The son of Shmuel, the firstborn grandson of the family was Henio. Henio. His nickname in the family was Henius. His Jewish name was Chaim, which means life. And indeed, he was full of life, a smart, energetic, naughty boy. In the house of his old strict grand grandparents, he was a fresh morning breeze of joyful free childhood. His father Shmuel wrote in one of, of his letters. Others would say that my son is mischievous, but to me he is incomparable charming. My aunt Sonia. After her marriage, Sonia moved to live with her husband Josef Korenberg in Kazimierz Dolny, which was called Kuzmir by the Jews. Kuzmir is a pic picturesque little town on Wisla River, not far away from Lublin. Their home was at the Rinnik, the main market square. 
a year after her marriage, she gave birth to a healthy, good-looking son, Avraham, Avramale, Abramik. The family members visited each other often. Here you can see her young sisters, Esther and Rachela, come from Lublin to Kuznir to see Sonia and her baby. And on Shavuot holiday, the family from Kuzmir came to Lublin to celebrate together. Here you can see proud grandfather with Abramek and Henio taking a walk along the street in Lublin. Sonia was a beloved woman. She was beloved daughter. She was a beloved sister, and most of all, she was a beloved wife. In one of his letters, my grandfather wrote, her husband, Yosef, would wash her feet and drink the water. <sighs> wow, wow. As I was amazed by the powerful image, I looked for the source of the phrase and found it in the Talmud as an expression of extreme unlimited love and admiration. What was their fate? What happened to them? Sonia and her husband and her son and all the Jewish community of Kazim Yesh which was called Kuzmir by the Jews, were transported on 30 of March, 42, on the very same days when her mother, her sisters, and all the Jewish community of Lublin were transported to the very same place, to the death camp Belgians. And the ashes of the Kuzmirers and the ashes of the Lubliners were mixed together in the bloody soil of Belgians. My grandparents, Ephraim and Chaya. Ephraim Zitomirsky was born in Mezhiboz, the cradle of Hasidism, where Israel, Rabbi Israel Baal Shem Tov was born. He lived in Lublin, a town of Hasidism, and he was a mitnaged, opposer, a litvak, litai, mitnaged. He was a chovev tzion, lover of Zion, and a member of Hamizrahi, religious Zionist movement, and he was one of the founders of Yavne School in Lublin. Take a look at the picture. Here you can see in the, in the center, my grandfather, Ephraim Zitomirsky, and in, left to him his best friend, Eliezer Mokotovsky, grandfather of Ronnie Gitter. Above them, above them, Avram Tzvi Weisels, grandfather of Dan Oren. Here, here, Shlomo Tuvia Lux, grandfather of Esther Rechtman, and all these, these good people, they were some of the best people of religious Lublin. Each one of them deserves a story, but not today, not now. Since the day my father immigrated to Palestine, Eretz Israel, his parents, were, his parents wrote him letters regularly. In my father's inheritance, there are more than 40 letters from home. His parents, sisters, and brother. Most of them are postcards. On one side, my grandmother was writing in Yiddish, my entire king, my dear child, and was signing Deine Mutter, 
your mother. On the other side of the postcard, my grandfather was writing in Hebrew, starting with starting his letters with Bni Chavivi, my beloved son, and ending with Avicha, your father. The Hebrew of my grandfather is a rich, archaic language, Beta Midrash Hebrew, with biblical verses and Talmudic phrases. He was describing what was going on in the family life. And as I told before, my grandfather was a Litvak, Litai. His point of view is rational, sober-minded, critical, sharp, ironic, loving. And because he wrote his letter in Hebrew, I could read them. The letters from the period, period of war are in Polish. The reports are censored. Reading the letters from those years is walking from loss to loss. The last words of my grandfather to my father, a month be before he died of typhus in the Lublin ghetto. His last words were, thank you for thinking of me. Don't forget us. Don't forget us. These words are a will for me. My father Yehuda, Leibush, Leon. On March 37, my father left his family on his way to Eretz Israel. In Eretz Israel, he met my mother, Hannah Hochberg. They were married and were among the founders of Kibbutz Amir in the Upper Galilee. Me and my very dear beloved brother, Yaakov, Zichrono Livracha, were born in the Galilee on the banks of Jordan River facing Mount Hermon. The past was present in our home. My parents were always telling about their homes and their families. They had letters and photos through which I learned to know my missing family. Mein liebe Kind, mein teire Kind, Bni Chavivi, Bni Chavivi, Kochani Yehuda, Drogi Brachi, Taire Leibush, Drogi Leibushu, Shalom Lecha Leibush, Shalom Lecha Achi, Shalom Yakiri, Shalom Lecha Yehuda Chavivi. In his last years, my father clung more and more to the old letters box, taking out a letter, sharing it with me, holding the letter and reading it again and again and again and longing endlessly. His pain and longing outlined for me the searching road, the road to Poland. The second story is my story, me seeking my family. After the fall of communist regime in Poland and the opening of gates, there was a possibility to visit Poland. My father had doubts whether to travel or not. I know nothing was left there, he said, but in the Jewish cemetery of Warsaw, maybe, there are still family graves from the time before the war. On the year 2012, with two of my sons, Yuval and Shvulik, I went to the cemetery to seek ancient tombs, Lifkod Kivrei Avot. Trees, branches, twigs, 
bushes and piles of leaves make the walking difficult. No paved roads. Forest of graved stones. Matzevot, matzevot, matzevot. And yet, we have found Do you remember this picture from the wedding of Sonia? Do you remember the pictures on the wall? My great-grandmother, Liba, and my great-grandfather, Avram Dov. We found them. We found the gravestone of Liba Melamed, beautiful, upright, engraved stone, Marat Liba Melamed. And at another section of the cemetery, a gravestone in memory of my great grandfather, Avram Dov Melamed, with a night, with a nice poem written on the stone with a crosstichon of his name. And we, we went, and that's it. Uh, at the most remote end, at the most remote end of the cemetery, a moving tombstone, Tsiyun Kever, which I will have to tell you about separately another time. Archives tell, tell about my uncle Shmuel. In the ghetto, Shmuel was the manager of the post office at Kowalska Street. In an occupied country whose borders are closed, he found a winding way to send letters to his brother and to his comrades, members of his movement. He corresponded with Nathan Schwalb, director of the Jewish agency offices and Hechalutz movement in Geneva, Switzerland. In the archive of the labor movement in Tel Aviv, me and my son Shmulik had found a collection of letters exchanged between my uncle and Nathan Schwalb. Among these letters, we found a letter for Maidan Tatarsky Ghetto. Please look at this envelope. Shmuel Zitomirsky, Shmuel Zitomirsky, Lublin, Maidan Tatarsky, Judenrat, the stamp, Geneva, down, opened down, opened by Nazi censor. And uh, I, I, I have to tell, when I saw this letter, I was trembling. On July 42, Shmuel wrote to Nathan, My dear Nathan, my drogi Nathani, my drogi Nathani, you must know how sad and lonely I am. If my dear wife and my beloved parents were alive, things were totally different. In my loneliness, dear Nathan, in my loneliness, you are my only hope. You are my only hope. And on August, Nathan encouraged him, wrote him a letter. You must be strong and try to live for your son and for Eretz Israel. I repeat, for your son 
So it means that at that time, August 42, Henio was still alive. Not for long. On 9th of November, 42, the final liquidation of the Jewish ghetto in Maidan Tatarsky occurred. About 3,000 Jews were sent to Maidanek, where they were selected. Healthy men and women were sent to forced labor camps. Old people and children were sent immediately to the gas chamber. Henya was a child, a nine and a half years old child. We can only guess his fate. The scream of silence. Henyo, torn from the arms of his father, all alone in the darkness of the gas chamber. His mother, grandparents, aunts were taken before, disappeared in a transport to who knows where. Such a small boy, alone with the screams of dying people, with the horror of death. And he was a naughty, joyful boy, so full of life. That is not the way his life should have ended and before he lived it. Who heard his scream inside the gas chamber? The walls that were closing in around him were sealed. They blocked the, the air from getting into his nose and did not let his scream to be heard outside. His voice was silenced. His life was silenced. And yet, his father Shmuel was still alive, hiding somewhere in Lublin. The last letter of my uncle was written in January 44 and was sent by a courier from Lublin to the rescue committee of the Jewish Agency in Istanbul. Istanbul. He reported about the great execution in Maidanek, the Erntfest. Lonely and desperate, Shmuel wrote his last words. You have no idea how difficult and dangerous it is to live here. I only dream of the time I could leave this horrible country and see you again. All I want is that time will come because I cannot continue living anymore. Half a year later, when the Red Army entered Lublin, Shmuel was not alive anymore. How did he die? Probably we will never know. His last words did not reach my father. Seventy years later, they reached to me. I found his letters in the archives of the labor, mo labor movement, Lavon Institute in Tel Aviv, and in the archives of the Ghetto Fighters House in Israel. My father did not know about these letters. The third story, Brahma Grotzka, Grotzka Gate, Theater Enen, me, Henio, and Brahma Grotzka. Your picture had become an icon. Your virtual picture so heavy on my heart's wall. The story of Brahma Grotzka, Theater Enen, is a story of a Polish avant-garde theater 
that settled in the Grotzka Gate. This gate, which in the past separated between the Christian town and the Jewish quarter, opened for them a road to the lost world of the Jewish community. The poet Wisława Szymburska wrote a poem, The End and the Beginning. In this poem, she wrote about the continual process of covering and hiding the terrible crime. In opposite to the oblivion process of Szymburska poem, Brahma Grotzka group is devoted to reveal. Members of Brahma group collect testimonies, preserve, show, and commemorate the lost Jewish community. They educate to humanism, equal rights, democracy, tolerance, freedom. On 2001, the attempts to seek my family brought me to Lublin. I traveled with other second generation members of, Louis, of Lublin Jewish organization. I did not know what I would find in the town of my father. And when I arrived, I found friends. I found a wonderful group of Brahma Grotzka people. I discovered them and they discovered me. Before we left, they requested our group members, if you have any documentation at home, please send it to us. I accepted the challenge. As I came back home, I opened the photo album and the old letters box. I sent them the story of my cousin Henio. At Grotzka Gate, they adopted the image of the innocent child. After long years of oblivion and hiding, people listen to his silence because his silence is his story. In Brahma Grotzka, the town restored his silent present as a symbol to the extinct presence of Lublin's Jewish community. Letters are written to him, letters to Henio. Drogi Henio. Drogi Henio, Drogi Henio, Drogi Pani Henio. Dear Henio, they write to him. Dear Henio. And here begins a new story. And it is your story. Yes. Neta, uh, uh, Jacob, thank, thank you so much for this moving presentation. Uh, I have to say that although I knew Henio's story and I always speak about it while guiding in the Grotzka exhibition, because as you know, it is displayed in, in our place, you gave so much wider perspective in such an organized, emotional way um, with so many details and, and all of this together with your personal background that was really really special and emotional experience so thank you thank you so much for that um, um, and please stay with us uh, for the for the Q&A session uh, so I will ask you to join us again in like 10-15 minutes um, you are all free to ask questions in in chat um, now or during Dominika's presentation so we will have time for those questions at the end of the meeting um, and uh, now I would like to ask uh, Dominika uh, Mayok uh, to uh, tell us a little bit more uh, about um, 
Rama's project uh, based on Tchenyo's story. Uh, but before that, let me introduce you. Uh, Dominika Mayuk is an educator in the um, education and animation lab at the Grotska Gate uh, and then Theater Center. Uh, Dominika is uh, engaged in educational, oral history and uh, biographical projects concerning the Jewish heritage of Lublin and the Lublin region, uh, as well as Holocaust remembrance. Uh, and today, as I said, she will speak about uh, Henio's project. So, uh, Dominika, the floor is yours. Uh, you can <laughs> Thanks. The presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me and thank you for this opportunity to, to be uh, today with you and first of all with Neta on this special day and that I can uh, in this way, let's say, continue the story of Neta uh, and start with the picture actually Neta um, uh, ended her presentation because Neta said that uh, it was a challenge uh, to be in Lublin uh, to meet the people in Brama Grodzka and to try to start a new journey with them. And uh, I must tell that it was also the challenge for the people in Brama Grodzka to take this responsibility actually for the story, for the family story of uh, Henry Tomirski and to try to work with this story uh, in Lublin, in, in the birth city of Henio and uh, family city of uh, Zhytomirski family. And uh, I would like to start with the words of uh, Tomek Pietrasiewicz, so you know the founder of Brama Grodzka, uh, who actually was the first one who responded uh, to Neta's story. And uh, as you can see here, his words, um, because the picture, the last picture of Henio from the whole album we got was the most uh, powerful, I think, and potential one. Um, so you see the photo of a little boy was taken on one of Lublin's main streets. It does not stand out with anything special and little can be said about it. Perhaps some of the inhabitants of Lublin are able to recognize the place where the boy is standing. People pass it every day, not paying attention to it. But behind this seemingly ordinary photo, there is the story of life and death of a Jewish boy, Henio Zetomirski, born in Lublin in 1933. So this was this responsibility, and I would like to tell you about the answer we tried to, uh, to give uh, to Neta. And this is the project. So the project, which started already more than 15 years ago, in 2005, uh, the project called Letters to Henio. And the date which was chosen for uh, starting this project was the 19th of April 2005. And uh, so therefore I'm also very happy that we can meet today. Mm, uh, because you know the 18th of April in Poland is this Holocaust Remembrance Day and counteracting crimes against, against humanity. And on the special day, um, the special day is devoted especially for the actions uh, in schools, for educational projects devoted to the Holocaust. Uh, and it was our proposal for um, for the schools, for uh, educational um, institution in Lublin and in Lublin region. And uh, here is the continuity of the story in letters of, of Neta, because um, actually here um, I can say uh, two, uh, two um, metaphors of the letters met, because one of them is, of course, the letters which were sent from Lublin to Palestine, uh, which you know already, but the others were the letters which are already sent uh, a few years ago uh, in Lublin from uh, Lublin's um, students to the uh, Jewish inhabitants of Lublin's ghetto. It was the project started a few years ago and such letters were sent already. But in 2005, we, we decided that uh, these all letters will be sent on that day uh, to Henio. He will be the face, he will be the story, uh, which, which actually can be transformed uh, to, to the young generation uh, in Lublin. And uh, here I would like to show you the place, actually, because uh, maybe not uh, everyone knows Lublin. 
Uh, so this is exactly the center of Lublin, Krakowskie Przedmieście. And here you can see the main street and this, this bank <laughs> um, building here. And uh, I would like you to, uh, to see, to watch for two minutes the short movie. Uh, which was taken already 10 years ago, but uh, as you will experience, we repeat this action, we repeat this uh, pro project every year on the 19th of, uh, of uh, April. So um, actually it doesn't matter that uh, what you will hear is <laughs> will be in Polish, but I would like to, to, to get a little bit the atmosphere of that day uh, here in the town. Dzisiaj obchodzimy ogólnopolski dzień pamięci o ofiarach Holokaustu. To zdjęcie, które Państwo widzicie, przedstawia małego chłopca, kilkuletnie dziecko urodzone w naszym mieście w roku 1933. Henio Żytomirski zginął w obozie na Majdanku w 1942 roku. Wcześniejszych jego losów nie znamy, możemy tylko powiedzieć, że przebywał on w getcie lubelskim. Ostatnie zdjęcie właśnie pochodzi z tego miejsca, tutaj właśnie z tych schodów. Zapraszamy Państwa wszystkich do włączenia się do akcji Listy do Henia, organizowanej przez Ośrodek Brama Grodzka Teatr NN. Wszystkich serdecznie zapraszamy do pisania listów do Henia Żytomirskiego. So the, the letters are written and uh, they are written in different places and in different form. But what I think uh, it's crucial in this project, uh, there are just few uh, dimensions we can we can say in it. Um, so just let me let me tell about these few words. Um, this uh, this act of writing letters to Henry, this is of course the act of commemora commemoration of all the Jews of Lublin murdered in the Holocaust. Uh, this what we give to this. This is this personal engagement of students not only by by writing and sending these letters but uh, as you may um, may guess partly at least the the letters are returning to the students yes so this is the whole process uh, that are involved uh, during these days uh, then as you saw the situation the situation is outside so the people who are on the street on the day uh, can at least hear about it can just uh, come here can uh, ask questions of course that they can also pass by and don't pay attention but this is their choice and they anyway have to face the situation of course the the, the project is announced in the media in the local media at the time uh, we repeat this uh, this project, yes. So this is the permanent and repetitive action. Um, so this is what I think gives this visibility and recognition, not only of course to Henio, but to all the Lubin Jews murdered during the Holocaust. Uh, and then the place. The place is very important. You know the place from the last picture because this acting on this spot. Uh, makes this place n not only uh, the historical but also the current um, meaning and at the same time and uh, this all this this all features gives um, uh, let us uh, 
to do the process of mapping the city. So it means uh, we give the new meanings to the places, not only to this one, but this is the main one, the, the, the symbol actually, but uh, to all places connected with the uh, with uh, Hanyo's story in Lublin. Uh, here there is an example of such a letter. I, I chose one written in, uh, in English, but of course they are mostly 99% are written in Polish. Uh, but here, of course, there are different things, statements written in those um, in those letters. Uh, and let's say just a few words about the summary of this project, because this is already 15 years since we started this project here we can see the one example of a letter written in uh, italian uh, that from that time during these 15 years um, the students from actually more than 30 schools took from lublin and the region took uh, part in it um, the students from not only lublin but also uh, some other polish cities as you see here uh, the participants of the workshops um, where they also can hear the story of Henio and write the letters are also fr from um, places outside Poland. Uh, and we, we gained also some partners and the letters uh, are written also um, abroad, just like in Israel, Ukraine, Italy, and even we got one from Bosnia and uh, Herzegovina. Uh, so this is actually the most important information regarding to the whole uh, project, but let me uh, tell you a few things about other activities based on the um, Henio's story, because uh, we also had another uh, ways of telling Henio's story. Uh, to our um, activities. One of them, this is also the city walk, because every every year also on the 19th of April we repeat it and we walk the Henio's um, traces in the city. Uh, we do the workshop, so not only on the 19th of April, but actually during the whole year the groups are coming and they know the Henio's stories and then are writing the letters as well. Uh, we put the Kenyan story on the exhibition, so he's one on the faces, um, just like on the primer uh, exhibition in Majdanek and also in the Grodzka Gate um, uh, Center. Then we also do the publications, the, some small and bigger one. Uh, also the comic, as you see, the walk, this is the comic for, for students, the smaller uh, group. And uh, also this year we will publish um, the book Liste do Henia, which is actually the summary of 15 years of this project. Uh, the Henia story is also seen now on this big wall painting. Uh, which is the part of the Lublin Memory Trail uh, in Lublin. And here you can see um, the place where also Henio with his father Shmuel is standing on this one of the streets in Lublin here. Uh, Henio is visible also on, on the website and other online activities. There is the website in Polish and in English letters to Henio with all this information. Uh, also some years ago we um, did a project where the Henio was put on the Facebook and uh, this was I think very interesting activity but also the controversial one. Mm, and what is very important through all these years we got and we felt that Neta and her family uh, support us in all our activities uh, because actually we couldn't do it uh, without this cooperation, without, without this support, um, not to feel that we use the story of Henio, but that we can do it together and uh, uh, as, a, as a proposal actually here in Lublin. Uh, and uh, the last words uh, regarding to this pandemic time, because of course we cannot do uh, last year and this year, we cannot do our activities outside and invite schools to, to do it uh, on the 19th of April. So last year we just printed this uh, uh, this letter here, as you see in the, the graphic way, printed in the printing chamber here by Robert Sava in Lublin, where we just tried to use the message which is uh, put here from the letters uh, written by students for all these years. Um, let me read it because they are written in, as you see, in four languages here, uh, English, German, uh, uh, Hebrew and Polish. 
And uh, from these quotes, we built one letter to Henio. Dear Henio, we write to you today to commemorate your story. We, no matter of background, are thinking of you, and maybe that's already a little good thing we can do. My great-grandmother was also in the ghetto, but she survived. To this, I would like to add that you look great in the costume of the king. So this is our <laughs> contribution, let's say, uh, to the story, to the story which was started by Neta 15 years ago. And I hope we will continue. Actually, we do our best to, to continue the story of Hanya in Lublin. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Dominika. Uh, it, it was great to hear um, about all these initiatives, creative initiatives uh, that Brahma carries out uh, and, and try to speak and uh, remind about Henio's story. Uh, thank you uh, so much and thank you, Neta, for uh, joining us uh, again. Um, so uh, we still have a couple of minutes for questions. So all of you uh, are free to ask and use the public chat to ask questions. Uh, but let me ask the first one uh, if you are uh, okay with that. And it will be a question to uh, Neta. Um, I'm curious uh, if uh, you always known about Henio's story, uh, or maybe you discovered it at, at some point of your of your life. When was this moment? Uh, I knew the story of the family. I knew always, but when I came to the Grotzka Gate, and I understood that you are working with young people, so I decided to choose one of the family. The young, the, the young child, Henio, and uh, to tell the, the story of the family through Henio, through the child. Mm -hmm. So you knew the, the, the story uh, like since you were a child, as far as yes, I always, know. always. Mm -hmm. it was at home and the album was at home. And what I added after many years is my searches in archives and mm -hmm. the the. Uh, Jewish the cemetery in Okopova Street in Warsaw, but the story, the, the family story, I knew always. My mm -hmm. my parents, these these were are uh, these were their stories. They did not tell any fairy tales. They told about their families. So I always knew the story. And can you tell us how you discovered Prava Grotska? Uh, like how how did you learn about it? Uh, only on the first time I came with our uh, organization to Lublin. And uh, it was the first time I did not know nothing about them. And uh, it was uh, uh, something very uh, new to me, very new. I did not know nothing about them. Mm -hmm. And the story and, continues till now, yes. Yeah? So it's uh, it's really something special. Yes, and you are doing I, what I say before. I, I said it sometimes, and I will repeat it now for people who did not uh, know it. I gave you my story, but you gave the story wings, so he can fly over the whole world with this story. The wings you gave it to him. Thank you. Thank you for this. Uh, kind words. Uh, we have a couple of questions from the audience. Um, so maybe before I will go to Dominika, uh, one more um, to you, Net. A question from Dan Oren. Um, can you share any more details about the content of your uh, grandfather's last letter? Uh, that is a very meaningful document. Uh, it, uh, because of a uh, there was no way to to uh, forward letters from uh, Poland, occupied Poland, to Palestine, occupied by uh, not occupied uh, with the mandate English mandate. So my father wrote to a cousin of him in America, in the United States, in New York, and she passed the the postcard to uh, Eretz Israel, to Palestine. And the, the last, the, and he wrote to her, 
ממצא, he called her ממצא, her name was לנה הכטמן, לנה הכטמן in New York, at home she was called ממצא, so he write dear ממצא, דרוגי ממצא, and he signed פרויקה, what's פרויקה? He was a friend, he was a, a very respectable man in his uh, community, and he was uh, signing Avicha, your father, and now he's Freuke. <laughs> but there was a censor, so he, he had to write to her, and if you see, it is the end of the year 41. Uh, soon it will be Pearl Harbor, and soon he will die, and soon there was no way to pass letters. And um, he, he, Shmuel had to find other ways to pass letters. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And maybe uh, one question to, uh, one or two to Dominika, mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you are okay with that. Uh, Dominika, you mentioned those, those workshops, Letters to Kenya, which are like, I think the most, important and, and the meaningful uh, when we talk about those activities. Uh, can you tell us um, about the reaction of those kids, like how old are those kids and how they react? Because it's a very you know, emotional thing to write a letter. Yeah, it's, it's, it's something very personal uh, and something unique these days even to write a hand letter, yeah, uh, because I understand that's the way they write. Uh, so if you can tell a little bit more about their reaction to that project. Uh, yes, of course, this is the, the unique and very hard uh, task, actually, for the student. Uh, nowadays, actually, this is their first letter they, they write personally by hand. Uh, and they say they cannot uh, actually they don't know they don't know the form even of the letter but it's uh, it doesn't matter actually the, the the matter is if they want to write it if they want to put some words on the paper and uh, the first reaction when um, when at the end of the workshop i asked them this is the proposal they can do it or, but they don't have to do it of course so uh, when i asked them uh, please try to do this and I give them the paper uh, they are mostly surprised of course yes and um, of course this is di different there are different reactions because sometimes just the students take the paper and start writing without any any, any questions uh, sometimes they just ask but uh, but what I can ask uh, what I can write yes so they're looking for some um, uh, let's say advices, yes, uh, how to write such a letter. Um, but you know, I'm not a teacher, so I cannot give some advices for writing. I cannot only say, just try to imagine uh, how you would like to address this letter. Or if you think about, can you think about the boy? Or maybe you think about someone who, who is older, or maybe he's your friend, or just try to personal this, um, uh, this, uh, this boy. Uh, for you, uh, and uh, some of them just uh, stay with white paper, yes, so it's not a little bit for sure. Got it. Um, you know, thank you, thank, we are like limited with time, uh, and this hour went so fast, uh, so um, thank you both for this time uh, and those presentation and the story. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that's not the end of that story, you know, as Yuneta said, like, it, it was beautiful that uh, there are wings to that story, so I'm pretty sure we will fly uh, much, much longer, and this uh, uh, we will remember that way, it is sort of a um, commemoration, so thank you both uh, once again, thanks to all our participants for the, um, uh, that, that you've decided to spend this hour uh, with us. Uh, please feel free uh, if you won't manage to give a comment here, but you would like to say something to Neta or to Dominique or to us, feel free to leave a comment on the click meeting form or write us an email. Uh, we are open for your feedback, also for your suggestions for the future meetings, uh, our Drama Talks uh, webinars. Uh, so please uh, feel free to, to contact us. Uh, and uh, I, I already, uh, I would like to invite you for the next meeting, which will take place 
uh, in a month or even uh, a bit longer on May, May 13, uh, when Piotr Nazaruk uh, will speak about uh, Sheva Sukar, uh, there will be a presentation uh, called The Golden Kate, a conversation with uh, Sheva Sukar. It will be um, very Yiddish oriented. So for those of you who are fond of Yiddish, I'm pretty sure uh, you will find it very interesting. So uh, thanks again. Uh, and it was much. super nice <laughs> to see you uh, on this special day and um, see you next time. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you very much to all of you. Bye, Neta. <laughs> Hopefully, see you in Lublin soon. Yeah, we are waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting.